Welcome to week five of Cultures in Conflict. To start chapter five, our authors remind us that conflict is a difference within a person or between two or more persons that touches them where they make meanings or experience their identities. From there, we are reminded that culture refers to the underground rivers that connect us to others in the groups to which we belong. By underground rivers, our authors mean the underlying or deeper roots of difference we deal with, or don't in some cases, by which we connect or don't connect with others. From there, we are asked two questions. How are these two sets of ideas related to each other? We are told we will answer this question by examining three aspects of interaction of culture and conflict, which include culture assigns meaning to conflict, telling us what the conflict is about. Culture, conflict in turn stimulates cultural changes and continuity by shaping the cultural lenses through which we interpret what conflict is about and culture and conflict are intertwined, constantly shaping and reshaping each other in an evolving, interactive process. How does conflict shape and reshape culture? For this question, processes by which cultural messages are transmitted by cultural characters, or abstract and concrete objects that carry symbolic meanings within and across social contexts of conflict, will be highlighted. To accomplish this, we will examine how socially significant events, such as violence, people movements, mergers of cultural groups, and social changes reshape culture by changing cultural characters. What are the dynamics of culture? There are several, and those must be identified and understood before we go any further. It is com common for some people to be so entangled in a conflict that they don't remember where it started and the facts of the conflict, versus the fable of the conflict are often so mixed together, making the truth hard to grasp. Conflict begins with us as children. We are told who are and who are not part of us. The result is this information gives us a lifetime frame of reference. Conflict actually gives some people a sense of belonging or a sense of justice. Conflict can be destructive, destroying or blocking connections with others, Conflicts often take on a life of their own, producing their own unique courses of development and effects, separate from the original intent and issue. Conflicts eventually dissipate. Conflicts continue to affect the lives of all involved, even after they dissipate through stories often passed unto children. Conflict is dynamic and a systematic process. They come full circle, creating turmoil and disruption even after they dissipate. Conflicts often form, but are unnoticed initially. Conflicts are normally more intense whenever the conflict is related to resources that the people involved are dependent upon. Differences in themselves do not always result in conflict. That being said, differences involving resources almost always result in conflict, while differences involving the felt and sensed world, our emotional needs, do not always necessarily result in conflict. Conflicts are based in meaning. One's meaning making of conflict always relates to one's attention given to the conflict. Otherwise, does one even recognize or even place value on the conflict? So if that is the case, why are there so many conflicts between cultural groups? Well, the answer is simple. It's because we are not interested in stepping outside of our own frame of references or norms and at least try to see the issue from another's perspective. Our text gives us another way of looking at this explanation when it says we are not aware of creative and workable ways to turn cross-cultural differences into opportunities for constructive relationship building. All this being said, we come back to our initial question. How does culture shape and reshape conflict? Our text outlines three reasons why this happens, and we will cover how culture shapes and reshapes conflict next. Cultural frames are the boundaries of our norms which cause anything outside of these frames to be hard to recognize and or acknowledge as acceptable. Cultural frames determine our conflict behavior or sets our parameters of all possible options that we will consider in dealing with a given conflict. It's these parameters that may cause conflict in that we don't often realize that there are other unknowns, to us anyway cultural terrains outside of our parameters, and we tend to see anything outside of these parameters as unimaginable nonsense. Our text tells us that the only way to overcome our cultural frames is through dialogue with the other culture with genuine curiosity. Cultural explanations of why we do what we do, 
This explains to us why we do what we do and makes us see anything that is unfamiliar to our norms as on the outside. Otherwise, it's through our cultures that we make certain goals and behaviors, even those in conflict, appear more natural, preferable, and legitimate to the person anyway. To make this even more unproductive, personal motivations get involved, further complicating things through manipulation and polarized relationships, thus creating and reinforcing stereotyping. In short, this often creates the perception among groups of who is bad and who is good based solely on a stereotype. Cultural memories and expectations. Through shared with our culture memories, expectations, historical events, and even geographical lines, we create symbols that are felt in our hearts and our minds as all important. Our cultural memories often cause conflict in that they shape and reshape relationships with others. Historical continuity of cultural memories always exists in any relationship with a different culture and very often, once realized, is a surprise to us. Finally, our cultural memories and expectations are formed within us through shared symbols and experiences with others within our culture. Finally, as promised, we will now cover how culture shapes and reshapes con conflict. As we have learned, culture facilitates both cultural changes and continuity. Events related to social conflict form new cultural carriers, which can be concrete objects or abstract ideas that convey symbolic messages across social contexts. Obviously, cultural carriers that infiltrate our cultural identities have the greatest effect on culture because these carriers touch our hearts and our minds, or who we are and what we care the most about. So what cultural carriers have the most effect on social and interpersonal conflict? Our text shows us that it's those that occur in the form of large events, on a worldwide scale, or on an extremely personal level, such as the 9-11 attacks in the United States. It is because these events are such majority events, it is difficult for us to grasp their scope. Our text tells us that there are four conflict-related events that shape and reshape conflict, which include intensive protracted violence. Examples of this event would be internal wars, such as World War I, uh, World War II, genocide, nuclear explosions, or a large-scale terrorist attack. Historically, events such as these have had a major effect on shaping and reshaping a broad range of cultural carriers. Whenever these events are interpersonal in nature, they can cause internal scars that are not as obvious, but can have just as much effect on relationships. Forced movement of people. People who are forced to relocate, being in an unfamiliar place and stripped of the social norms their home brings, often idealize the norms of their native country creating myths and stories to be shared with future generations. As a result, the displaced people's cultural carriers are made and remade in evolving, based on changes to their unfamiliar environment, patterns of means making. Mergers of different cultural groups. Even though this occurs voluntarily, these types of mergers can cause one of two things to happen, conflict or harmony, depending upon the circumstances of that merger. The events would be an example of cultural carriers that infiltrate a group's cultural identity and may have the greatest effect on a culture because it touches the hearts and the minds of the multiple groups involved in the merger. The important lesson with this cultural carrier is the importance of dialogue between the affected groups. Dialogue about the why and the how of the merger. This dialogue creates a wealth of opportunity where all sides can emphasize with the other. Introduction of new systems of thinking. Finally, we learned that large-scale conflicts can and do introduce new ideologies, political tenets, and other systems of thinking that shape and reshape culture. It's through these changes the undercurrents, both positive and negative, are penetrated and thus facilitate new cultural carriers. Our authors close by telling us that these types of cultural carriers are so significant to our lives, we not only don't forget them, we tell our children and their children not to forget them either. Again, the 9-11 attacks on the United States is a great example of this. We learn the cultural carriers are so significant, the impact on our lives cannot be reversed, causing permanent impressions on our mind and our souls. And as a result, they always reshape the cultural lenses through which each person involved interprets for future conflicts. The bottom line is that culture and conflict are inextricably intertwined, not only at the oasis, but in multiple aspects of interpersonal and social dynamics. I hope you have a great week five. Continue your work on um, getting prepared for your final project, 
and make sure to reach out to your instructor if you have any questions or concerns.